Today we will have a look at all the data fetching methods of Next. If you think about Next.js, many of us think about it as server-side rendering. But since I think almost a year now, there are other data fetching methods available and we will talk about the pros and cons of all of them and how they actually work with a code example and the real API. But before we do that, let's have a look at how the data fetching methods actually work. So nowadays with the most current version of Next.js, which is version 10 at the moment, we have four different fetching methods. We have client-side rendering, server-side rendering, static side generation and incremental static generation. So first let's figure out what client side rendering actually is. So client side rendering is actually the render method that vanilla react actually uses. So here we have our server with our markup. So this is where our react or next code would be. We have our database and then the client, which is of course the user. So with client side rendering, we will send the markup to the client and then fetch the data from our database after that. So we will put that in here. In React world, that's usually done with something like use effect and use state and all of that. Then client-side rendering just became popular with all the JavaScript frameworks. Beforehand, we didn't really use client-side rendering because it has some disadvantages. One of them is it's not so SEO friendly because again, if the client, so if the user asks for data, we will first serve the markup and then and only then we will ask for the data. We will have a look later how that actually looks like in code. Then the next fetching method is service side rendering. So here on the server, again, we have the markup and before we actually send the markup to the client, we will first fetch the data in the server and then we send that bundle to the client. And on every request that the client makes, we will send that again. So if the client refreshes the page, we will do that again. We will fetch the data from the database and then send all of that, like that bundle to the client. Then the next fetching method is actually, if we have reset here, our database and our server is static site generation. So let's say we change something here in our markup. Let's say we make this element bigger here. We most probably made that on our local machine and now are pushing our changes to Git and mostly GitHub. And then that will, in many cases, trigger a rebuild of this site. And while doing that rebuild, we will actually fetch the data and put it in here as a static site. So again, on every rebuild, we fetch the data, put that data in here statically. And now we can just serve this markup with data, which is already pre-built and send it to the client. So if the client now refreshes the page, we don't have to fetch it again because the data is already inside. It's already static here in the markup. We can just send the data and the markup again here as the bundle. So this has the advantage compared to server side rendering that we don't have to fetch the data every time this markup and the data, so speaking, the site is requested. And this is usually the fastest way you can serve up a website because the heavy lifting of the markup and putting the data on the markup is already done beforehand, before the client even asks for the page. This has one big disadvantage though. If you change some data in a database, this data won't update because it's already statically generated. Of course, if you change the data here, you could run a rebuild, but a functionality like that is not automatically pre-built with next. So you would need to trigger the rebuild yourself if you change something in the database, which is quite inconvenient. So either you can have server-side rendering, like we talked before, where you fetch the data every time the data is requested, so you're sure you have the most updated data, or there is a new data fetching method, which is called incremental static generation, which kind of provides the best of both worlds. So how does this work? We still statically generate our data, and have that bundle ready for the client to be as fast as possible so we don't have to fetch the data when the client requests the page. But what we actually do with some kind of interval we can define, we will see that how it looks in the code afterwards, we can rebuild this page per interval. Let's say we have an interval of five seconds, then we will tell our Next.js server or our Node server at the end of the day to rebuild this page 
every five seconds. So we can be sure that it's more or less updated. So as much updated as five second means for your application, but every five seconds you have a pre-built page and you can serve that page to the client without having to fetch it again. And of course, if it's pre-built, it still behaves like a static site. So you can serve up the markup and the data as one bundle without the client having to request anything else. So let's jump into the code to see how that actually works. So here with Mac API, which is a service or a free service, at least for one endpoint, we have here an API with data and you can see it's just ID name for six elements. And here in our code, I have a basic Next.js application. So with Next, React and React DOM. And here we have six pages, of course, the app page, then the index page, which isn't really used. And here we have the example how a client side rendered application would look like or a page would look like in Next.js. So here, this is pretty standard React. We have use effect and use state. We fetch our mock API. We get back the data. We convert that data to JSON. And then we set the state here in our use state hook in our function get data, which is called with use effect. And then we render out this data here in our return. So at the end of the day, our application looks like this. And now if you change something here, if you change the data, let's say from name six to name 66, we update that and then we refresh our page. We can see name 66 here. And of course, if you go here to our sources panel, we can see we don't really have any HTML in here because again, it's client side rendered. We can compare that to server side rendering where we have the exact same functionality. So the page looks exactly the same, but how we fetch the data is quite different. So here we use the fetch method, get server side props. We append that function after the actual React component, which is up here. So again, we fetch the data, we have our result, we convert that result to JSON, and then we have our state. But instead of putting our state in our use state hook, we actually can pass it in here as a prop. And that prop, because of next, we can access that here in our props. So like a prop, you would pass down in a normal React component. And again, we map over that state and we display it on the page. So how does that look like? We go to SSR. And we can see the application looks exactly the same, but if you go here to our source and we can see that our actual HTML was sent and not just a blank page where we afterwards client side rendered the data. So this was server side rendering. What about static site generation? The beautiful thing about Next.js is that the only thing we have to change is the actual fetching method name. So before we had server side rendered, which is get server side props. And the only thing that is different here in static site generation is that we call this function get static props. Here, this is the exact same thing. And then we'll again pass the, the state as props. And again, this is the, exactly the same thing. The only thing that is different from this file is this fetching method has a different name. So let's go to that page to see how it looks like. And again, we have the same result. And again, if we look at the source file, the actual HTML has been sent. So what about the incremental static generation? Again, this is the exact same file, even with the same name, get static props. The only difference is that we return not just the props here, which is our state, but we also pass this revalidate with a value of 100, which is in seconds. So every 100th of a second, we will actually rebuild this component. So let's check that out, how that looks like. And again, it's the exact same thing. And if you go here to our source, it's also pre-rendered. Okay, so this was just a local environment. Let's go to the actual deployed code, which is here. This is the application I deployed with Netlify. All right, now we have all our files open here. This is client-side rendered. This is server-side rendered. This is static side generation. And this is incremental static regeneration. All right, what do you think what happens if you go to our API, go to data here and change this name six to name 77. So place your bets now, we go to our page here, we reload our client side rendered. And of course the name changes to name 77. Let's do the same at server side rendering. Again, the name changes. Let's go to our static side generation of course, here the name doesn't change because this page has been pre-built. 
What happens here if you go to incremental static regeneration? Here it doesn't change, but let's wait the 100 seconds. And now we can see after a little while we have the right name here. So that's the magic of incremental static regeneration. Even though it's a static generated site, we are still more or less up to date with our data. All right, now you might have the question of when to use which data fetching method. So client side rendering is done when SEO is not so important, when it's a very, very dynamic page, something like an admin of some kind of application, like an accounting program, a CRM, something like that. Static site generation is something which you should probably look at as the default option, which is something like a blog where each blog post doesn't really change that often, like a service page where, yeah, you're still gonna have, let's say a camera repair shop. You won't change your services every time. So with static site generation, you make sure that your pages have the quickest load time as possible. Then incremental static generation is when you have, let's say, when you have a little bit a more, a more dynamic block, then you can use incremental static generation. Or if it's not a service page, but a product page where the product sometimes changes like once a day or once a week or something like that, then I would suggest to have an incremental static regeneration. Server-side rendering should be used when it's quite a dynamic data, something like, let's say, Reddit or eBay, where data changes very, very often. This is where server-side rendering comes in very, very handy. But at the end of the day, you have to play around a little and see what best works for your application. But as I said, probably the default option should be static generation or incremental static generation. All right, that was already it. Don't forget that the link to the repo to the code base is in the description down below if you wanna play around yourself. And if you like that video, please give it a like. And if you wanna see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.